How's it going, tiny little hot dog cuties? Today I want to talk about the coronavirus from the perspective of a medical student. And it doesn't even seem like a few weeks ago I made that video about the census. And since then, the world has been enveloped by coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, otherwise known as COVID-19. And it's kind of been completely, completely unexpected. We knew this virus has been around for a while in China. And although it was primarily contained in China for a very long time, in the recent weeks, it's kind of spread through almost every single continent in the entire world. And it's frightening. It's frustrating. It's making doctors make a lot of really, really hard decisions, making sacrifices, putting their lives on the line. And luckily for medical students, because we are not licensed, a lot of us are being told to stay home and do virtual online learning. Very similar to what a lot of kids are doing in other schools, whether it's elementary school, preschool, undergrad. A lot of us have been switched to online learning and even recently the LCME, the overlying body of medical students, has suggested that they cancel rotations for third and fourth year medical schools, which my school has done in the last week. Now this video, I know there's like a billion videos out right now about the coronavirus on YouTube, but this video is specifically my perspective as a medical student here living in Georgia, US, what am I seeing and what I am doing? Because essentially I've been put on the bench and I'm kind of glad I'm been put on the bench and I'm sure a lot of medical students are glad they're put on the bench because of the fact that we are completely unprepared to handle cases like this. Seasoned doctors can handle cases like this and even they are having a hard time. Can you imagine if medical students were told to be involved in part to be involved as part of the team of taking care of a coronavirus patient? That's just wild, but I do do understand that if the nation does need me and they do call upon me, I will absolutely lend my body, my 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 brain, my skills. I will absolutely do that. But now what can I do as a citizen of this country and as a citizen of the world to protect other people, to keep people informed? That's what I want, why I want to make the video. I want to share with you guys what I've been doing and what I encourage other medical students to do and a lot of med school students are already doing. The first thing that I decided I was going to do is to keep up with the literature that's coming out about the coronavirus SARS-CoV-2 and that's because I am very, very adept at medical jargon. So whenever I read a research article, I get it. For the layperson to read a research article, it's a lot of really, really complicated data statistics and medical words that they don't know what really what it really means. So for me, I have been going to Lancet, I've been going to the New England Journal of Medicine almost every single day and reading the vast number of information that's coming out every single day. It's kind of crazy how fast journals and articles have been rolling out literature on this virus and rolling out case studies, rolling out peer reviews, rolling out original research. It's really, really crazy how much information is coming on at once. We still don't know a lot about the virus, but every single day we learn more and more. And what I have told myself to do is to keep up with that literature. And yes, I am keeping up with school, but school has kind of died down a little bit at this point of the year, so I can do that. I'm keeping myself incredibly informed, and I'm not just harboring that information, I am sharing it on social media. I'm using the platforms that I am active in to inform other lay people who don't understand medical jargon and who don't understand research publications. I am making that information accessible for the masses. And that is what I'm doing primarily as a medical student as of right now. And I think doing something like this is completely, completely important because I think everybody should have access to information. Everybody deserves to know what is going on. Everybody deserves to know where are we going? Where are we headed? And I'm sharing that. Whether or not it's good news or bad news, I am going to share it so that other people are informed. Another thing that I have been doing is calling out fake data, calling out hoaxes, calling out people 
who are spreading these really, really false ideas of what it means to have the coronavirus. Recently, I've seen someone say that you should go do a hot sauna bath to get kill the virus within inside you. So that is my goal. My goal is to call these people out and use facts, use evidence-based facts to call these people out and I'm not there to shame them. That's not my job at all. My job is to inform others and make sure other people aren't duped by the information that these other people are sharing. And I'm very, very aware that these people that are sharing it probably don't know what they're sharing is inaccurate. A lot of people just like sharing something that looks cool or looks interesting or something that sounds groundbreaking, they will share it but having no idea whether or not the information is accurate. So that is what I've been doing. I've been going on social media. If somebody posts something that's completely inaccurate, I kindly, kindly, gently, and kindly tell them that, no, this is actually wrong. Here's the actual data. Can you please either remove this or make an edit to your post so that other people don't keep sharing misinformation? And I think that is something both I can do and even the right average person can do as well. But for me, I, I can have really, really good solid evidence and a really good talking point to make my statements clear with these people so that I can back other people up if other people are telling them, hey, this is wrong. I actually have scientific data that I can help people understand that what you're sharing is wrong and shouldn't be shared because it might put more people in danger. And this other thing that I've been doing kind of ties in with what I've been doing on social media. A lot of my outreach has been on social media is if someone shares a review or an article that's claiming a statistic, I actually read that article because a lot of people share articles without reading them. They just share the headline. So I go in and I read the article and I've realized that a lot of these articles that people are sharing from like MSN or NBC or some random news website, they're sharing data from non-peer reviewed, non-peer reviewed research, which means they haven't gone through a body of science, they haven't gone through a bunch of scientists to make sure that da that data is accurate. Although that data may be accurate after being peer reviewed, I think it's incredibly irresponsible that certain journalism websites are sharing that data without proper peer review because they're just sharing it for monetary capitalistic gains. And that honestly is disgusting. But my job is not to shame people who are sharing it. My do job is to inform them, and that's what I am doing. And finally, because my exams got postponed until Mar the last week of March, I am going to devote my time to doing research of my own. You guys know that I am a trans man. I'm very passionate about LGBTQ research, and I won't, I'm going to focus my efforts on advocating for trans people, advocating for LGBTQ people to have proper screening measures from the coronavirus. That is my goal and to highlight the necessity for marginalized groups including homeless people, undocumented immigrants, people who are lower income. I'm going to emphasize that in the papers that I do write and try to publish so that doctors are aware that these patients need extra scrutiny in their care. So I hope that you guys find this video informational. I love you guys and I'll see you on the next one. I'll keep you guys updated on new coronavirus information. Please, please keep yourself informed. Please practice social distancing and sheltering in. Please take care of your elderly. Please take care of your immunocompromised. Don't be selfish and do good to the world. I love you guys and I'll see you on the next one. This is Ben.